All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're talking about how to use a Raspberry Pi and its GPI opens as a HomeKit accessory for Apple's HomeKit. And this is incredibly easy, and it allows you to do things like control LEDs with HomeKit, or even use your Raspberry Pi and push buttons as light switches. There is so much you can do here. You can even start adding in new things and start making devices that were never meant to be smart, smart, just by using the GPI opens to control them using a Raspberry Pi. All right, and so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use Homebridge. Homebridge is an open source app that basically allows you to take any smart device and hook it up into Apple's HomeKit ecosystem. It basically acts as a bridge for any smart device coming into HomeKit, and it works really well, and there are plugins for almost any smart device you can think of, and if there's not, you can look into writing your own. It's actually not too hard to do. All right, and so the way we're gonna do this is we're just gonna use a plugin that basically allows us to communicate with our Raspberry Pi over HomeKit. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to be able to control a LED on a Raspberry Pi and use a single push button as a light switch for any HomeKit device anywhere. It's really easy to use and it gives you so much ability to customize things. I'm really excited for this and there's so many things I wanna start messing with. All right, and so now let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is install Homebridge. I've got a true NAS tutorial that I've already done for setting this up, but I'm probably gonna do one for Synology and other things just cause it's so easy to use. Also, you can host it on a Raspberry Pi. So once you've done that, all you need to do is go on your phone, open up the HomeKit app, and just hit this plus button, and we're going to add an accessory. Scan the accessory, and just like that, it adds the bridge. It's gonna tell us, hey, this is an unverified accessory, it's because it's open source. We're gonna say add anyway. And we'll call this bedroom. We'll just call it HomeBridge. And just like that, it's been connected. All right, so now we've added the bridge to our home, but there's nothing connected to it. To do that, we're going to need to go into Homebridge and we're going to click Plugins. And we're going to search for a plugin. I'm going to look for the Raspberry Pi one. And this is the one I use. We're going to go ahead and click Install on it. And so now we're going to need to set up our Pi first. So we're going to go ahead and close out of this. And we're going to go to the GitHub page for this, which includes all the information you need to know how to do. And so we're just gonna scroll down until it says remote Raspberry Pi configuration, right here. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is install a couple things. I found that the Pi GPIO D and GPIO were not installed, so we we're gonna to need to install them. So we'll just go ahead and copy this and we're gonna go ahead and SSH in. So now I've SSH in my Raspberry Pi and I'm gonna type sudo apt install Pi GPIO D. And these are required to expose the GPIO accessibility to the network. And so we're going to do the same thing, but instead of GPIO D, GPIO. All right, and so now that was just one thing. I think it's in the full install, but it's not in the light install that I use. All right, and so now we need to enable remote GPIO controls using sudo raspi dash config. And we're going to go into interface options and go into remote GPIO. We're going to enable remote GPIO server to be accessible over the network. And we're just gonna hit finish. All right, and so now our remote GPIO pins should be accessible over the network. So now there's a couple more things we need to do. So now we're going to do the system control daemon reload. That's just gonna make sure that everything got reloaded. And now we're going to enable then start the Pi GPIOD service. So first we're gonna do sudo system control enable, and now we'll say start. And I'll just go ahead and clear it to give us some space. And so now if you look back here, it says Pi GS hardware, and this control basically makes sure that this is running, the GPIO stuff is running. So we're just gonna paste it in and we should get a number. If we get a number, that means it worked. If it did not work, you would have gotten an error. And now the last thing we're going to need to do is create this script that basically goes and returns the time and date. So it kind of syncs the things up and I believe it also returns the temperature. It's just one way that it interfaces with the Pi. So this script is right here. They've already set it up for us very nicely. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy the thing, but don't copy the dollar sign. 
and just paste it in there. So basically what that did was it created a file called git state. And now finally, we're just gonna to have to make it runnable. So they've got the command here as well. It just gives execute. All right, and so now we are done and they've also got to check in here to make sure that it worked. You just say pigs shell git state. So we'll paste that in as well. All right, and if it returns a zero, that means all is good. All right, and there's one more script that he wrote as well. And this allows the remote GPIO execution to actually control the brightness of the LED on the Raspberry Pi. So we're just gonna go and copy that. It is this right here. And we're going to do it the exact same way we did earlier. So we're just gonna copy that and paste it in. And now there's a couple of testing things here. This makes sure that the files can be read. Should return a zero. And this right here, makes sure that FR can read it. Voila. So it gives your voltage, your temperature, and things like that. And that's actually what we're gonna be able to get out of our home kit. So now we're gonna go ahead and close the file with pigs fc0. This is all code that I'll link below. It's a really great setup. And I wasn't gonna spend a ton of time going over what these things do just because it works really well for me. And so I'm not gonna spend the time of like, hey, you need to do this, 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 and this. Basically just copy the commands he's got there. He's got great documentation. All right, and so now from our Raspberry Pi setup, we are completely done. It is really easy. And so now we're gonna start setting things up. All right, and so as you can see right here, I've set up this Raspberry Pi to have a button and an LED. Both are connected to GPIO pins and have resistors tying to ground. Basically, you wanna use a resistor so you can make sure not to burn out anything and cause a short circuit. So now that I've got this set up, I can demonstrate the button and the LED capabilities of adding them into HomeKit. So to do this, we're going to first need to know what the GPIO pins are that I plugged into. You need to make sure that they are GPIO pins for one. And so if you look through the documentation, the orange cable is plugged into GPIO 14 and the white cable is plugged into GPIO 15. And so these are your GPIO pins. And so we're going to know that our LED is 15, our button is 14. And so now we're going to go back into our home bridge, Raspberry Pi settings, and we're going to go into settings this time. So now we're going to actually set the thing up. So for host, you're gonna type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. For me, that's 10.0.0.23. And the port, which defaults to 8888. And now the Raspberry Pi for the host name. And so now we've got a few options here. Do you want to have the smoke sensor, the power LED, and the hidden of the Pi itself? And so we're going to not tick any of those boxes because we want to be able to see everything. And now we start adding devices. So we've got two devices here. We've got the button, we'll call it light switch. And for GPIO, it is on pin 14. And it is not reversed. And basically for pulse, how long till you reset it? So we're going to do one second. And so that's all the information you need and we're going to add to devices to add another one. So now this one is going to be a light. We'll call it Pi Light and this is GPIO 15. And we don't need to give any more of these settings. And so now we are done. So we're just gonna go ahead and click save right here. And now we're going to go ahead and restart it. All right, and so if you see these logs, we're getting logs. And so you see the time, humidity, pressure, basically we're getting stuff out of the Raspberry Pi, so that means it's working. So now let's go into HomeBridge. Sorry, HomeKit. And so as you can see right here, I now have a temperature gauge right here. This is the onboard temperature sensor of the Raspberry Pi. It's not that helpful as a temperature sensor because clearly it's not 108 degrees in my office right here, but we can have some additional things. So now we can see right here that there's the bedroom Raspberry Pi light and there's the bedroom Raspberry Pi switch. And if you look right here, there's a bedroom Raspberry Pi and it actually has the option to turn off the LED on the Raspberry Pi. So if you look right here, when I click down, off. And so now let's go to the LED. We're gonna click it and it's gonna turn on. And just like that, we can turn on the LED off and on. It works super well and is really easy to use. So now let's start being able to use this button right here. So to do that, we're gonna select the button and we're going to tell it what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and say for a single press, 
I want to turn on my bedroom lamp. So we're going to turn it on. And so now we're also going to say for a long press, turn it off. And you can do anything you want with these. And so now let's just go ahead and try it. The lamp's pointing on me, so I'm going to press it once. And just like that, you can see the lamp has turned on. Now we're going to hold it. And just like that, the light turns off. One more time. Light turns on. Light turns off. It works that easily, and you can start doing so much stuff with this. They've got plugins for garage doors, they've got plugins for everything you can think of, and it's really easy to use. You could also throw your own temperature sensor on here to get better readings, and there's just so many options there, and honestly, the iSource code is gonna be really easy to modify for whatever you need to do. All right, well that's it for this tutorial, honestly. This is a great setup for something like a Pi Zero with Wi-Fi that you can just throw anywhere because you just need those GPIO pins. And now we're able to control whatever we'd like to. All right, well go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me, I've got a link for that in the description. All right, have a good one, bye.